it out, ring it out, ring it out. It will give them courage to, it will help them to be true. Ring it out, ring it out, ring it out, ring out the world. Sing it today. Still far from Jesus, many live in sin. and as in doubt, darkness and doubt. Ring out the news. Wonderful news that makes men free. Men free. Happy and free. To all the lost of every nation. Ring the message out. Ring it out. Tell the world of saving grace, make it known in every place. Ring it out, ring it out, ring it out, ring it out. Help the needy ones to know him from whom all blessings flow. Ring it out, ring it out, ring it out, ring it out, ring out the world or land and see. Sing it today. Still far from Jesus, many live in sin. And Ring out the news that makes men free. Happy and free to all the lost of every nation. Ring the message. Let's sing it again. Ring out the world or land and sea. Still far from Jesus, many live in sin. Lost in doubt, darkness in doubt. Ring out the news that makes men free. Happy and free to all the lost of every nation. Ring the message out. Ring it out. Amen. And y'all can be seated. Good morning, guys. Welcome to Sunday morning at White's Ferry Road. We're so happy to see all you guys. We're actually blessed by your presence today and so happy to see you this morning that I want to tell you about something that's happening next week. Maybe you can come back for that one, too. So next week, we're going to have some special guests here, some visitors who are going to be speaking and talking about our ongoing One Kingdom disaster relief ministry that's been working uh, down in Lake Charles. Lake Charles suffered horrific damages uh, due to the hurricanes, due to Laura and Delta, and uh, we've been working with a great presence down there. And so those guys are going to be up here, and they're going to be visiting a little bit with you face-to-face. -face. So if you can join us for that, we would love it. If you need to dial in or tune in or really and truly, we'd love to have you drive in and come and join us next Sunday. But in the week, meanwhile, we're glad to have you here on this Sunday. So welcome home. We love the fact that you're here with us, and let's continue on worshiping together. All right, if you would be standing again with us. I know I gave you like 30 seconds of a sit down there, but. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full. Hearts full of praise, so be exalted, O oh Lord my God. Hosanna in the highest. Glory, glory, glory to the King of kings. Glory, glory, glory to the King of kings. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full, hearts full of praise, so be exalted, O oh Lord my God, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Your name. 
Let the whole earth sing, let the whole earth sing. You reach for us from on heaven's throne when we had no hope. You are the way, there is no other. You are the way, there is no other. You rose from death to victory. Jesus alive in us, you outshine the sun, you are glorious, you are glorious, Lord over all, you have made us new, we owe it all to you, in everything, be exalted in everything, be exalted from death to victory you reign in life oh majesty your name be high and lifted up jesus jesus alive in us the enemy is under your feet we are free we are free death has been defeated by love you overcome, you overcome. The enemy is under your feet. We are free, we are free. Death has been defeated by love. You overcome, you overcome. You rose, you rose from death to victory. You reign. In life, oh majesty, your name be high and lifted up. Jesus, Jesus, alive in us. You rose, you rose from death to victory. You reign in life, oh majesty, your name be high and lifted up. Jesus. Jesus alive in us, Jesus, Jesus alive in us. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the Through the 
trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, for the stand before.
Holy, holy, holy. We've been talking in our men's group about, about the pillars of wisdom. And I thought today, since we are remembering a, a deed that was committed by a Middle Eastern man, I started thinking about a couple of those pillars, knowledge and power. The proverb writer starts out by saying that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. 
I guess what made me think about that is uh, Missy and I were reading our Bibles the other night. He ran across a verse, and Jesus said, Woe to you experts in the law, because you have taken away the key to knowledge. You yourselves have not entered, and you have hindered those who were entering. He really told Nicodemus the same thing. He told Nicodemus how to get in, that you had to be born of the water and the spirit because of what Jesus would do. Matthew recorded that Jesus said, you shut the doors of the kingdom and of heaven and men in people's faces. I tried to figure out the three things that the teachers of the law did wrong. They were the ones that were supposed to know who, who this was. But they failed to attribute the work of God to God. They failed to identify God in their presence. And they prevented others from entering the kingdom. This man who made the blind see, the lame walk, the sick were healed, the deaf hear, the dead were raised, and the good news was proclaimed to the poor. That's God's work. He's still doing that work. Somebody said the other day, Williams, what did he do for you? He rescued me. He rescued me from a life of wrath and a life of shame, and he's given me peace of mind. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For since the wisdom, for since in the wisdom of God the world, and it, though it through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. To those who God called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are truly grateful that through the sacrifice of Jesus, you have become our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a king seated among us. Let every heart receive him. Where there is praise, he will inhabit. And there will be grace and mercy all around. Soon we will be our 
My name is Aaron Flanders. Uh, I serve in uh, One Kingdom with the disaster relief team. Um, ready to jump out there and grab a chainsaw and have some fun. And then I also serve in the children's ministry. Um, and these are your announcements for today. Senior parents, got to have your pictures in by April 18th. Uh, next Sunday, all in digital format, ready to go. They need them ASAP. Check your app for details. Today we started some new Bible classes and discipleship groups. We would love you to join us. Our discipleship groups will be studying the Lord's Prayer with David Bromley. So we have two new ladies groups starting, one on Sunday and one on Wednesday. The Sunday one is led by some of our younger women on how to study the Bible. And our Wednesday one is taught by Joni Kirby about what Titus teaches about the gospel. And for all you men early risers, there's a early, early men's study group on Tuesday mornings with Chad Johnson and Mike Williams. Check your apps for times, details, and locations. Middle school kids and families, check your app, check with your leaders. There is a lot going on, a lot coming up, lots to do. Make sure you get on the app and talk to your leaders and find out what's coming up. I've been very blessed by serving here in this church, WFR. I am hoping that you all can get connected uh find some place that you can jump in and join us and be as blessed as my wife and i we're so glad you're here welcome home i'm ryan lee and this is one minute with one kingdom at the end of march we had our first ever one kingdom zoom conference we gathered for a time of encouragement celebration and fellowship all in all five continents and 19 nations were represented, from Colombia in South America, Liberia in West Africa, Nepal and Philippines in Southeast Asia. The Zoom conference was a huge success. We heard from one of our partners, Larry Bowles, who spearheaded the refugee ministry in Athens, Greece. Here at One Kingdom, we're used to being able to travel, visit our friends, and also have visitors come and see us here in West Monroe. And because of COVID-19, we've not been able to do that. So this was such an encouraging time for us to see each other face to face, share victories, talk about struggles, and spend some time in prayer with one another. We're hoping that this will be a biannual event going forward. Maybe one day we'll get to do it in person, but for now, what an encouraging time it was for us to be together in one space. This has been One Minute with One Kingdom. Good morning, church. 
Isn't that a beautiful day out there? I really just wanted to get on my motorcycle and just go riding and skip church and everything, but I didn't. I'm here. <laughs> Some of y'all listening, uh, <clears throat> live stream may have already done that. Uh, that's the danger of, you know, having that kind of a thing available all the time. So, uh, but we are glad to, uh, everyone is here and uh, we just uh, have been, been had a great study through the book of Acts and uh, we're going to be ra- uh, wrapping that up here in the next couple of weeks and then uh, making plans to dive in eventually to the book of Romans which is going to be a great study uh, and so uh, just uh, just appreciate so much your desire to be here uh, not only in the assembly but uh, our Bible class still just keeps building and uh, not only classes here physically, but also our live stream Bible classes. I think there's a special one now starting on Tuesday. Isn't that right, Dave? Tuesday nights. I think Scott Caldwell's doing. That'll be a great success. Uh, I know already has been. There'll be others being taught. So there's plenty of opportunity to get the word. Uh, so uh, ter- take your Bibles, by the way, uh, and turn to Acts chapter 15. And uh, we're going to be looking at a little bit of that. Griffith Barner. Griffith, where are you at? Come on up. My scripture reader for today. Now, Griffith, you, uh, you're fixing to graduate, right? I am. And so what are you going to do after graduation? I'm going to Abilene. Abilene oh. Christian University? Yes, sir. Uh, Lindy, did you hear that? Abilene Christian, that's Lindy's, Lindy's a grad, if you can't tell. And uh, so uh, uh, that's great. Uh, excited for you to do that. I, I spent a little time out there myself, and so uh, uh, if you like a lot of wind and nothing to break it, you'll love Abilene. Uh, but uh, also, let's see, you, uh, uh, you work at Chick-fil-A? I do. Been homeschooled? I am. Excellent, excellent. Very sharp young man, and I'm... Uh, uh, we're excited about what God's going to do for you and through you in the kingdom. And thank you for uh, sharing our verse today, if you don't mind, please. All right, I got two. The first one's going to be Acts 15, 7. Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. And the second one's going to be Acts 15, 11. We believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it very, very much. I'm sure Abilene uh, probably hadn't changed a whole lot. It was, uh, I was only there in 1979. Uh, there's probably been a few new buildings built and a few of those kinds of things since then, right? Um, we've dealt with Acts chapter 17. Oh, by the way, before, before we get into the text, uh, you understand the pews are leaving us after today's service. And they'll be getting a clearing out of this room. And so if you want one, take it. If you want 40, take them. <laughs> Some worker so, somewhere that's fixing to have to move them all will be grateful to you. Uh, but uh, we will be getting rid of the I, I was here the first Sunday these pews were put in and set on them. And I'm here the last Sunday uh, set on these pews that, they, that they'll be in here. Uh, my dream is to be here the first Sunday the chairs are put in. And depending on the quality of chair and the quality of my life, I'd like to think that I can make it till they ended too. Uh, but, uh, but thank you so much for uh, uh, people buying your own chair and uh, getting us situated where we can kind of improve these. Have, we have got our money's worth out of these. And uh, I appreciate your patience. If you've ever sat on one and heard it pop and see pieces of wood roll down the aisle, th- you know, thank you for not, you know, uh, getting too irate about that. So we appreciate your patience on that. Uh, in Easter, we dealt with uh, Acts 17, Paul going in to an Easterless community uh, and talking about the resurrection. But I wanted to back up a little bit before that happened in Acts 17 when Paul's on his journeys. They're teaching people the gospel. Of course, Peter's been teaching the Gentiles the gospel. They run into a problem. Now, can you imagine that a church would have a problem? Conflict over different people who come in 
And all of a sudden, folks come in from different backgrounds and different situations, and they run into conflict. Uh, I don't know if you uh, have been raised at the same place and gone to the same church all your life or whatever, but uh, if, you've had, if you've moved around and deep, people do church different where you visit, and you first walk in and you say, I can't believe how they do that wrong, you know, uh, that type of thing, right? Because typically we think that whatever we've been doing the longest is the rightest. Got it? I just made that word up, by the way. But whatever we have a history of doing, that's what's right. That's kind of what we think. Well, so you've got some Gentiles all of a sudden being converted. And that man, they have a whole host of different background than the Jewish background, right? The Jews coming out of that the Israel background, the, the, uh, the sacrifice, the old law, Moses, the prophets, and all those things, which, by the way, should have led them to Jesus and accept who he was, but they struggled with that. So their conversion to Christ and Christianity out of that, they bring a lot of extra religious baggage, so to speak, with them. They don't quite know what to do with some of it. The Gentiles are converted. They don't have that baggage. They're like, let's roll, you know. And so all of a sudden they're together trying to fellowship, meet together. Guess what? When you try the Gentile and Jew try to eat together, I mean, the Jewish people aren't excited about the hog barbecue you got lined up, right? Because they've been under some strict dietary laws about what to eat. And all of a sudden you can't even fellowship together even though you're Christian. So they start running into this kind of thing. So Paul has just been traveling. He's come back to Antioch. And at the end of 14, if you'll follow with me, he says in verse 26, From Matea they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. Key sentence. They're committed to the grace of God. Committed to the grace of God. Say that with me. Committed to the grace of God. One more time. Committed to the grace of God. Okay? Okay. All right, so on arriving, they gather the church together. I right? report all that God's been doing, uh, doing through them and how he's opened up the doors to the Gentiles. And they stay there a long time with the disciples. So there, they've converted a lot of people, Jew, Gentile, uh, and they're all together in a family, and they're at Antioch. Now, here we go. Some men came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the brothers that unless you are circumcised according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. Now, wait a minute. I thought all this salvation was in the name of Jesus. I thought the gospel is what saves you. Now you're telling me I got to do something else? And what you're, what you're telling me I got to do? I ain't very excited about it. You're going to make the Gentiles be circumcised in order to consider them Christians or they're not saved? Okay, that's the teaching they had. So this brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them, as it should. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed, along with some of the other believers, to go up to Jerusalem and see the apostles and the elders about this question. The church uh, sent them on their way and as they traveled through Phoenicia and Samaria and they told how the Gentiles had been converted the news made all the brothers very glad and when they came to Jerusalem they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and elders to whom they reported everything God had done through them then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to obey the law of Moses so now they're going to add to Christianity everything that they've been burdened with in Judaism. Wait a minute. I thought, well, I thought the song we sung was amazing. My chains are gone. They're hooking up extra chains. And so they got this question. And so they send a group to Jerusalem to talk to the apostles and the elders and leadership there what are we going to do with this thing? we got this conflict going on. What do we do with it? The apostles and elders met to consider the question. After much discussion, Peter, here's old Peter. So what you're going to do, you're going to hear, you're going to see grace defended. First by Peter, then by Barnabas and Paul. 
and then by James. Okay, you've got three kind of defenses that are made here for grace. The title of this, by the way, is Saving Grace. I'm not, talk, I'm not talking about the fact that we're saved by grace. I'm talking about the leaders saving grace from those that want to uh, chain it down with a bunch of other stuff. Rescue it from the legalists. All right. Peter got up and he addresses them. Brothers, you know some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe God, uh, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted him by giving the Holy Spirit to them, just as he did us. And he made no distinction between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the disciples a yoke that neither we nor our fathers uh, have been able to bear? No. Here's a verse. We believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are. So that's Peter's defense is this. Guys, I'm an apostle. I went down, remember, I went down to Cornelius. I got the vision from God. I'm the one that preached the first gospel sermon. That matter of fact, we had that great miracle of all the different languages that said the gospel is going to go to all nations. What Jesus told us to do, matter of fact, right? Make disciples of every ethnic group, every nation, going all the world with it. He said, I'm a part, I, I, helped, I, I was there, we had that going on. So he gives basically his testimony of the grace going to the Gentiles. And don't be adding things that are a burden to them. So now you get Barnabas and Paul. The whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul. Telling about the miraculous signs, wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them. So they give their testimony. Look, we've been traveling. We've been converting people with the gospel. And God's been doing all kinds of great things through this. Then you've got this third guy speaks up, James. So when they finished, James spoke up. Brothers, listen to me. Simon has described to us how God has first showed his concern by taking from the Gentiles a people for himself. The words of the prophets are in agreement with this, as it is written, and he goes to the Bible. Peter goes to what they recognize as the beginning of the church and his own personal testimony as an apostle. Barnabas and Paul go to what they've seen God do as they converted Gentiles and saw them brought in, and they give their testimony. Now James comes in, and he's going to follow up the argument by saying, look, let's look at the Bible your Old Testament, because it tells you that God always planned to save people outside of the Jewish nation, the Gentiles. And he wrote this back in Amos, and he wrote it back in Isaiah. And don't you understand your Bible? By the way, it's always good when you get a conflict, just turn to the Bible. I love that. You know, one of the things I love about our elders meetings when we run into something and, and, and someone comes in and we have a discussion about something, trying to figure out how to make a decision... I, I love the fact it never fails that uh, Phil Robertson always opens up his Bible. Am I right, other elders? He opens up his Bible, and we go right there, and we start with the Word of God. Instead of our own preferences, our own desires, our own likes, let's go see what the Word says. Because I grew up in a, in a group that said, whatever is taught in the Bible, that's what we want to follow. Which, by the way, I love the fact that I had that seed planted in me. Matter of fact, my heart was kind of moved in, in, in a sad but joyful way this weekend. I was on my way back from Arkansas and uh, got a message that the guy that uh, preached where I grew up that had a big influence on my family, G.W. Allison, passed away yesterday. And I remember G.W.'s kind spirit. And I remember him working so hard, being best friends with my dad over the long haul. He planted the seed so that years down the road, I had the benefit of, of baptizing my father when he was 64. And I told that story the other day, and I realized 64, that's what I am now. I said, what happened? I thought my dad was old when I converted him. Well, he really wasn't that old. 
But you know what? G.W., he was at a basketball tournament. Him and my dad love sports, and they love going together and watching ball games. And he called me one night, and he said, Mike, I asked your dad when he was going to obey the gospel, and he told me, he said, I think I'm going to do it next time Mikey comes home. So G.W. calls me and tells me that. And guess what? Amazingly, I was free to go home. <laughs> he planted that seed years ago. I love the fact that I grew up in a place that says follow the Bible and had men like him that challenged me to do so. But that also challenges me to challenge my own tradition in my own history and that's where these guys end up so James he takes them to the Bible quotes Amos and in verse 19 he says it's my judgment therefore that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God instead we should write to them telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols from sexual immorality from meat strangled animals and from blood why? Why did he pick those? Because look at the next verse. For Moses has been preached in every city from the earliest times and is read in the synagogues on every Sabbath. Because that's the culture that they got converted in within that Jewish background. And so they knew that this was going to be a problem. Jewish people is going to have difficult letting go of the old law and all of, its, all of its restraints on how they live. Now, those, some of those can become very cultural. Some can become, uh, uh, they were biblical at one time. But it's not, uh, obviously Peter got the vision, right? Arise, kill, and eat. All this food's available. You're free to have it now. These food laws have changed. There is no theocratic nation anymore. See, the gospel is plucking out the clean hearts that want to serve God out of Israel as well as out of the Gentiles, forming a new Israel, a new people of God called the church. And so when you do that, people run into conflict and they want to bring their old stuff into the church and it runs into all kinds of problems. Now I love, I love this because they make it clear, first of all, you are saved by grace. You cannot add anything to being saved. And we've done that before. Because we've said, you don't worship the way I think it says you're lost. You don't take communion the way I say, think it, the Bible says you're lost. You don't do church service the way I think it ought to be done in the Bible. You're lost. And it breaks my heart to think that I would add, add a burden to people's life that God did not add. What's worse in some cases is that Satan makes us believe the lie and you add it to your own heart the biggest biggest distance in terms of accepting grace is from here to here because you read about your freedom and grace and yet because something's been logged in your mind year after year after year that if you don't do this you're not you're not saved it's so hard to break those chains and burdens. And so people walked around without any assurance of salvation. Now I'm not saying people are lost because they're unassured. I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not saying they won't go to heaven. I'm just saying they don't enjoy the trip very much. <laughs> because there's a lot of guilt and shame and wrestling and struggling for so much. When Jesus died to free you, from not only from sin, but he died to free us from legalism. The idea that somehow or another, I can do enough to be right with God. And I can't. And Paul made it very clear that we need to be committed to the grace of God for the work that God completes. So, 
The elders and apostles do the right thing in this conflict. One, they handle, they rescue grace out of the hands of the legalists, the Judaizing teachers that wanted to add circumcision. They rescue grace out of their hands. But then they display grace on the other side by asking the Gentiles to make some compromises in what they did culturally so they could have unity within the body. I love it. Grace is a beautiful picture of unity. Look what the elders do. Verse 22. The apostles and elders with the whole church decided to choose from their own men and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They chose Judas, called Barsabbas and Silas, and two of the men were leaders among the brothers. And with them they sent the following letter. So they write them a letter. How long has it been since you did a handwritten letter to anybody? You know, uh, they write them a letter. And they send it by people that they're confident that they can believe it's credible folks that are bringing this letter so they'll know some credibility comes with it. The apostles and elders, your brothers, to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. Now look, it's, re- it's this area in history for a purpose because it's in their history and their time that they're locked in with these Christians that come out of, out of, the, uh, out of Israel and out of, Ju- out of the Jewish background. And remember, the synagogues are going on. Moses has been taught. And so it's a historical context that exists. He's not writing a one-time thing forever in the Bible for all of us. But there's some principles here to look at. We've heard that, uh, that some went out from us without our authorization and disturbed you, troubling your minds about what they said. Now, let me ask you something. Have you ever had your mind disturbed and troubled by what someone else said about your Christianity? I love these elders and apostles here because they they get it. They understand that some brothers and sisters, all of a sudden, they're excited, this Christianity thing, man, I'm, I'm good. All of a sudden, now they're troubled. Their minds are troubled. I've laid awake at night trying to figure out how to solve troubles in the church. And I've met with people and I see their minds troubled and I hate it. And I wish I could just say the magic words and their troubles would go away. Some of you had those sleepless nights. Someone's confronted you. Someone's thrown you into confusion about some teaching within the Bible. And now all of a sudden your mind is disturbed and troubled. Look, anybody that misrepresents the grace of God creates troubled minds. Don't you ever doubt it. Matter of fact, you know the gospel. And anybody that comes to you and makes you doubt your salvation with anything else they're adding to it, let me tell you something. Let's get away from them because all they're fixing to do is trouble your mind. I'm just telling you this as a warning. Stay away from false teachers who do not understand the gospel, the simplicity of the gospel and the grace of God while hollering the whole time, I got grace better than you. I'm just telling you, stay away from them. They will trouble and disturb your mind. And that's what was happening here. Now look what this is. So we all agreed to choose some men and send them to you with dear friends, Barnabas and Paul. Look, they had that relationship, right? You can, you, people you trust, you, people you can kind of conf, take confidence in. You need those people in your life that are your teachers. Men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we're sending Judas and Silas to confirm by word of mouth what we're writing. We're surrounding this written letter with credible people. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. You ought to abstain from food, sacrifice to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, from sexual morality. You'll do well to avoid these things. Not you will be saved by avoiding these things. You'll do well to avoid these things. So they write this letter to help solve a conflict. Got it? Verse 30. The men were sent off and went down to Antioch where they gathered the church together and delivered the letter. 
The people read it and were glad for its encouraging message. I like, notice the word encouraging here. They get encouraged from it. Judas and Silas, who themselves were prophets, said much encourage and said much to encourage and strengthen the brothers. So these guys go carry the letter, and then as a result, they're speaking and they're giving strength and courage to the brothers. People who have been disturbed and upset in their mind about their own salvation and wondering what to do because they're running into conflicts, they need good men around them to strengthen and encourage them and help them know you're on the right track. It's okay. Don't you let people, as Paul said in Galatians, throw you into confusion. So they're there encouraging people. After spending some time there, they, went, they were sent off to the brothers with the blessing of peace to return to those who had sent them. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch where they and many others taught and preached the word of the Lord. Uh, this word remain, let me, I, I, let me pick something out here. Everybody, everybody with me? Got you? Right here? It's just a simple little word. Most versions it'll say stay. They remained or they stayed there. This is the word diatribo out of the Greek. And here's what it means. It means, comes from a word that means to rub through. Okay, here's the idea. It's to remain in one place long enough with activity to leave a mark or to make an impression. You ever have something that, uh, uh, that rubbed a certain spot for a long period of time and it rubbed through? Got it? It left its mark. It made an impression there. That's the word here. They, they didn't just hang around there and do nothing. They remained. They stayed there long enough that they, with their teaching, they left an impression. They rubbed through. They marked with their teaching. Left their mark of their teaching on the brothers and sisters there. In the simplest way, we would just say that's discipleship. Have you ever had somebody that's been a long time spiritual influence in your life? Now, Tommy Emmons has been a long time spiritual influence in my life. And I'll tell you what, he's rubbed me the wrong way. No, he didn't rub me the wrong way. But he spent enough time with me that his spirit and his grace and his love for people has rubbed through. Because, see, he would be more patient in dealing with people and giving them grace than I would because I'm like, look, I told him what the truth was. Let's move on, you know. I'm not too patient. I wasn't too patient. I'm still not a lot, but I'm working on that. Thank you, Tommy. But you got somebody in your life over a long haul, and they rub a spot, they leave a mark on you. Isn't that good? That's what Paul and Barnabas, they stayed with the brothers, and they kept teaching and preaching with other people too, to a point that they left an impression. And you know what the impression was they left, because it's the same one they left from the very first verse we read where it said they had been committed to the grace of God for the work that has now been completed. So what do you think their emphasis was? What mark did they leave? The grace of God. We do not let people steal from us the grace of God by adding burdens on of salvation that do not belong there. At the same time, we display grace with people that we have different backgrounds with and do things differently, and we figure out how to do that and can still fellowship. Hey, Gentiles, here's how you can eat with your Jewish brothers and sisters who are still all worried about their uh, food background. Uh, just abstain from eating those things when you're with those guys. Just you know, give that up. Grace gives up things for other people. Grace cares for other folks. Now, you either have two sides. On one, one side, if you have 
you know, Jesus came full of grace and truth. If you have truth without grace, you have, ends up with legalism. If you have grace without truth, it ends up with license that everything's just okay. You're free to do anything you want to. Legalists eventually says, I'm God, and I'll make the judgment who's in and out. Don't you love it when people can tell you who's in and out of the kingdom? I believe I'll leave that and up to God. What do you think? And then the license to say, hey, we got the freedom. When someone demands their freedom, there's usually an idea of satisfying self, not the will of God. But when you won't care about other people, you'll give up your freedom. Sometimes you don't have the right to do what you have the right to do. Stick that one in your hung box. Okay? Sometimes we don't have the right to do what we have the right to do. But we will not give in to people who add works to salvation that somehow or another you have to do this plus the blood of Jesus to be saved. We are saved by what? Grace. Believe it. Believe it. My problem was when I became a Christian, I didn't understand much grace, is I didn't really believe it. And it took me a while. I intellectually knew it, but it took a long time from it, from it going to the Bible, to my head, to my heart. I want you to go home and be able to say with full confidence, I know I am saved. Not because you did everything right in the service. Not because you did anything. I know I'm saved because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. I'm saved because of the grace of God. Nothing else. Nothing else. And his grace, Paul says, is more than enough. His mercies are new every morning. Grace was threatened. Grace was defended. Grace was practiced. And grace was delivered. And it's still being delivered today. If you put your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, if you believe the blood of Jesus can wash away your sins, you trust in his grace, you believe in him, his grace will be enough. That's why... When Peter in Acts 2, they said, what do we do when their hearts are pricked? He said, repent and be baptized. That's not the gospel. That's my response to the grace of God. That's my experience of the grace of God. I get to reenact what Jesus did for me. That's, that's an experience of grace. That's God in action, not me. I'm, baptism is not a work I do. Baptism is just me calling on the Lord, thanking him for his grace. We're only saved by the grace of God. It's not about baptizing people right. I'll never forget the first kid I baptized. I was scared and he was too. And I got that tall teenager, red-headed boy, I'll never forget him, up in uh, <clears throat> Omaha, Nebraska. I was on a campaign and... Uh, uh, Larry, you remember L.C. Lewis? L.C. taught me how to teach somebody the gospel. We were up there on a campaign, and I taught this guy, and I was scared. And he was, and I was, I don't know, I was 18 or something. He was 17 or whatever. But I, you know, so I get him in the baptistry, and I get everything ready, and I say whatever I think you're supposed to say, because nobody's really told me the formula. Which, by the way, there's not one. In case you're looking for that verse. And so I said what I was supposed to say, and I baptized him. Well, he was scared of the water. So when I baptized him, he reached out and grabbed the glass front. Well, there are just people standing up around like we do here sometimes. The preacher's there. It was after a Wednesday night service. And I've got him under, and his hand's holding to the glass, and the preacher's trying to get his fingers off the glass. <laughs> and I'm holding him down. He's starting to bubble, and I pull him back up. But hey, I'm raised in the Church of Christ. I know all body parts got to go under at the same time. So I grab his arm this time and I take him to the bottom. <laughs> we raise that kid up scared and saved all at the same time. <laughs> I 
And I look back and I think sometimes, you know, except for the grace of God, right? Because we're human, we just mess things up. But I am so thankful that the brothers in Acts 15, this may be one of the most important chapters in the whole Bible, that the brothers here saved grace out of the hands of the legalist, rescued it to make sure it continued to get preached as it should to the world and for that I am thankful Father we love you help us Father to humbly study your word help us to be like old James and go right back to the book help us Father to be like Barnabas and Paul and preaching and traveling and sharing of the good news of Jesus with those from different countries, different backgrounds, and help us to be like Peter who boldly stood up for the grace of Jesus. Father, may we not be disturbed in our minds by teachers that want to add something other than the simplicity of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. May we have a full understanding of the power of your grace through the story of Christ. And may we be committed to that and never be thrown off the path of sharing the good news with other people. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. If you have a need to be baptized today, we'll take care of that. If you have a need to come for prayers, uh, for sickness or whatever need. We're a forever family. We say no one comes alone. So whatever need you have, you can come and express that while together we stand and sing. I need you more More than yesterday I need you more More than words can say We have a couple of ladies that are going to be baptized today, and, uh, and I, I just want to say publicly and out loud, Mike, as you go get ready to, to, uh, to baptize these ladies, that is probably the best sermon on Acts 15 I've ever heard in my life. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, beautiful, beautiful when you talk about the grace of God with that. We, uh, we do want to... Uh, uh, as, as our ladies are going back there to get ready, a couple of housekeeping things and, and people to, to, uh, to catch you up on. One, uh, Dennis Jennings is watching live stream. Dennis, good to see you. He is in, uh, yeah, give it up for God on that one for sure. Dennis, I hope you hear that applause. A lot of people have been praying for you, little brother. And uh, he's in, is it Richard, is it Cornerstone he's in? He's in Cornerstone out in West Monroe. Uh, and we'll be there for another few weeks, but he's making the progress that he needs to make with that. And we also want to say welcome home, Jerry Madden. Glad you're home. And uh, Jerry and I are going to get together and play guitar and probably put Gloria in the hospital after that. 
uh, with that. And a big shout out to Bill Durham. Welcome home, dear brother. Welcome home. Welcome home. Good to see you and Carol. It's been a long, long journey with that. Also, we want to uh, uh, say uh, that Jerry, you know, comes back and stirs up trouble. And I'm on the spot here because it's, it's Gloria's birthday. And he wants us to say how old she is. And I know you get to a certain point that you don't care. You're just glad to be as old as you are. But I will say it this way. Happy birthday, Gloria. And Jerry, you must be really old <laughs> for her to be that young. I mean, let's go figure. The other one is to, to, that, that, that needs a shout out is Frances Williams. Because yesterday, I believe it was, she's been married to Lloyd for 61 years. Bless you. Bless you. And, uh, and I think they already slipped out a little early, but uh, we we'll get that. Also, want to uh, shout out uh, as well uh, our audiovisual team today. Uh, our internet was down, but we still did live stream, and they were scrambling all morning long and uh, have made it happen. So thank you guys for uh, what you did today to make that happen. Uh, with that, also. As Mike mentioned, this is our last Sunday with the pews. Uh, for those of you who have sat on one and ended up in the, your neighbor behind you's lap, you'll be thankful. For those, it's a little nostalgia. Um, I have heard from Cody Barkley, who is our contractor doing that. He, uh, he caught me this morning, and uh, his crew is going to be in here. There is some blue painter's tape right here. And he is a professional. I am not. I would bring my chainsaw, cut these things up, and get them out of here. His crew is going to try to, as fragile as they are, try to get them out of here as much as intact as possible, put them in the back parking lot. If you want a pew, you can come get this tape, put it on there, and put your name on it, and then come claim it. Some of you may have come prepared today to pull them up and go, and you can still do that if you want to. But if you want to take a chance that your pew is going to be together tomorrow, because uh, they are pretty fragile uh, with that, you can do that. Uh, they're long, and they're heavy, and they're awkward. So... God be with you on that one for sure with that and all of that crew that he's got coming tomorrow. Um, as also we want to mention as, they, as, as we wait on them, um, next week, the next two weeks, we will have temporary seating in here. Uh, and it's going to be those you know, plastic chairs you go to at weddings that are outside. So they're not going to be real comfortable. So if you want to bring something to sit on, go for it. But that will be the next two weeks. Three weeks from now, we should have the first set of our new seating in with that. So step over the construction. Uh, we'll have it, uh, Cody and his guys and the rest of us have this thing ready for every Sunday so we, we won't be down a service at all with that. If you have any questions on that, please don't hesitate to ask uh, with, uh, with that. Uh, let me see, make sure I got everything that I'm supposed to say. Did I forget anything anybody want to remind me of? There is obviously a boys camping trip this weekend, middle school. Next weekend, I didn't know about it. Bless you, middle school boys going camping. Have fun with that one. That sounds like a lock-in to me. Whew. Uh, bad words. But, hey, with Tommy Barker's probably cooking. He's pulling out the cast iron. I may show up for the food. Yes. Mm. Oh, thank you, Tommy. Thank you. Th glad you mentioned that. So it's, you can thank you, everybody. I don't know how many. I forgot to get a, a list, but several have bought your new chair. They're $154 a piece. You can, uh, somebody gave me a check today for that, for that. You can do it online like you normally give. Again, our, on, our internet is down today, but you can do it when you get home and just, you can still buy your chair. It's a way we can all be a part of that. Thank you for reminding me of that, uh, Tommy. Yeah, this is this is Jenny. She has been watching the live stream for about a year, actually, from California. And uh, so we're excited that you're here today. And so we're going to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's pretty cool when you drive all the way from California to get baptized. And it goes to show the influence that, that our live stream is having, for sure. And if you notice, Mike kept her away from the front so she didn't reach out and grab her hand.
Okay, I think you have some fans out there. So, Carrie, uh, uh, this is, look, Carrie, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Okay. Going to make him the Lord of your life? I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit for missing your sins and all these folks. And anybody who's ever done this, brother and sister in Christ, okay? Amen. And thank you for that shout out. That shout out happened all the way in heaven and pictures are being taken all over heaven over what just happened with those two ladies. And we celebrate with, with everybody, with them, uh, and many more to come as we, as we look forward to that. Let's pray today as we close out. Father, we're grateful for just our time together, for the celebration of your grace. And, and we get to actually see your, your grace being put on here today by these two ladies. Thank you for their life. I don't know their story or where they came from, but, uh, but Father, their journey with you begins in a great way today. I pray as, as, their, as their brothers and sisters that we, we walk alongside them and journey with them. And we, uh, as Mike mentioned, leave that impression. Uh, make our mark on them as you make your mark on us uh, in some great ways. We thank you for... For, for Bill and for Jerry being here and for, for many that, are, that have been struggling uh, with their health and, and even through this COVID, it's so good to see so many people back uh, as, 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 they, as they feel comfortable coming, coming back home here with us. We want to say a special prayer for my, my old friend, my dear brother, Richard Myers, Lindy's dad, as he really struggles right now in the hospital uh, with, his, with his kidneys and, and everything that's going on there. Be with him, be with Linda um, and those that are taking care of them. I hope he comes home quick uh, and, and recovers quickly. We love you. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, and the many, many ways you show it to us. Help us to continue to grow as we follow your spirit through Jesus. Amen. Love you guys. Hey, live stream uh, family. Uh, uh, we want to talk to you just by yourself. Al and I are standing here where the host normally stands uh, for our services. And look, you're the only one here because... Well, well, we had so much fun. You remember we got to host yeah. recently? Yeah. So we had so much fun doing it that we've snuck in here now with Shaq while nobody's here because everybody's off today. And so we just snuck in to do a video. We're right. not going to tell anybody. Right. The, the auditorium's totally empty, <laughs> but we're here for you. And, uh, and look, this is a whole room, our hosting live stream room that was built during the pandemic because of you guys for the live stream family. And it is such a blessing uh, to have you guys as our church family, even though you're not physically here in our building like uh, a lot of the folks are. So we mentioned this all along that, you know, we never sat down and had a plan. We just had a camera set up for live stream, basically for people who couldn't be here from our community or whatever. And so we never really thought about production value, something that looked really good, something that engaged you guys. And so the pandemic, with all of its curses has brought a blessing to us and to you because now we understand that, you know, we could really put something out great that people can worship with us and, and be and grow spiritually and have these blessings. So that's kind of the, the way this has evolved over the last year. Uh, obviously we've been talking a lot about upgrades, Mike. Oh yeah. And we have, cause we're, you know, in our own physical plan here, we're getting some chairs and those kinds of things. But, uh, but, but one of the great things about uh, what you guys have done for us as this live stream community has just grown is give us that family forever family uh, way beyond the building and so that's one of the reasons that we've put money into the the cameras and the screens and the, yeah. all the kind of things that have to go on to make live stream work which I did not have a clue, Al, no. on everything that went into that until Shaq and those guys started dreaming about this uh, being uh, really a mission effort and an extension of our church. So first of all, I want to say thank you for being a part of our forever family. But we also want to give you the opportunity to to give and, and help us uh, in terms of of growing as a church and, and financially supporting what we do uh, to folks beyond the building. And you, you better 
uh, no better than uh, the rest of us, uh, the benefits of staying connected in a more, in a more difficult time. And, and again, oh man, I just love the fact that I'm getting to know people from all over the country. It's really good. And so, you know, we know you may have a church home, you may have other things that you support and, and that's great. We're all behind you 100%. But if you if you don't, if you don't have anything you regu regularly contribute to, we would love for you to consider, you know, contributing to WFR just for our ministries and what we do, but especially in this sort of capital you know overlay they were doing with all this new stuff uh we need some help we need some uh, some monies and uh, maybe if you got that extra stimulus check from uh, the government maybe you're looking for some place to be able to put some money and we would love for you to do it here uh, we kind of front loaded and have already bought a lot of equipment they were using but we got some more things that we want to do and mainly just to have your experience of being with us better and so uh, we really appreciate you guys being along for the ride and uh, just want you to consider that. You can go to the app or you can go to the website. There's different places you can uh, to go to give, but we would uh, really appreciate you considering that and praying about it. Sure. And if you want to know more information about like what's, what happens behind the scenes, uh, email Shaq or Josh mm -hmm. uh, Patrick. They'll be glad to, to walk you through things that go on. Yeah. And, and look, some of you have had the dream of developing the live stream community people and greeters and uh, just so many things it's i i just again want to say how thankful i am you are such a blessing and encouragement uh to me and to al as we preach and teach here and i can't tell you uh what, what a joy it is so many of you have fresh and open hearts to the bible that's right and it's just a joy to even the teaching bible class and so many of you writing questions and and dive right into the study you are a great blessing the lord has blessed us richly uh, to get the, in touch with our forever family from around the country so like we say every week welcome home welcome home <laughs>